right, fellas, I'm going to be honest. This is about my 12th take. This is not going well. I don't do unscripted videos. I just had the terrible misfortune of having to watch back 14 minutes of me rambling about this game, and it was terrible. So we're just going to cut out the script, talk for a couple minutes. I've got a few bullet points, things that I feel went well about the launch of Star Wars Unlimited and things I'm concerned about. Just going to put them all in one video, get them out. Uh, it's going to be on camera. I don't tend to do on camera videos. I think there's like one on my channel already. It's not a very popular one. Who knows if this one will be, but I don't want to take a week to edit this because I've got like three other videos I'm working on right now, but I really want to talk about Star Wars Unlimited. So I went to a pre-release a couple days after my last video and I played the game. It's really good. The back and forth sort of Give and go is very Destiny-like with the one action and then your turn, my action, so on and so forth. It's fun. Uh, what isn't fun is having Luke and Vader in every pre-release kit. I hope they don't do that again. I'm not trying to be too harsh here, but I was building my deck and I was like, okay, let me build Tarkin. I think the Imperial Troopers deck is cool. And then I went through and I got two Imperial Troopers. So that idea is dead. I'm like, okay, Thrawn's my favorite character of all time. Let's build Thrawn. I pulled Thrawn. That's exciting. And then I looked and I was like, okay, I don't have ramp, I don't have bombs, I don't have anything to excuse playing control. All right, well, let's build IG-88. And I went through and I was like, my red cards are no good, I don't have one drops, I don't have two drops. Let's build Luke. Oh, okay, I got Han, I got two copies of Chewie, I got Obi-Wan, I've got a ton of shields and equipment and blue cards that are really fantastic and I put together a little deck and I was feeling good about it and then I sat down at the table and on the other side of the table is Darth Vader and I'm like oh that's cool we're playing the starter deck matchup that's exciting for my first game Star Wars Unlimited that feels appropriate and so I won and then I went to my second opponent and I sat down on the table and I said oh okay we're playing the starter decks again he's also playing Vader now I understand I'm part of the problem here uh and I'm not really maybe as mad as I, I sound about it, but it is kind of unfortunate when I sit down on my third round and it's a Luke Mirror matchup and I go home and I haven't played against anybody besides Luke or Vader. It happens, but you know, I'm looking to the left of me, there's a Vader player to the left of me, I look to the right of me, there's a Luke versus a Jyn Erso. Shout out to that guy, he had the courage to do what I didn't, but I really wanted my packs for winning the rounds. I'm very greedy. And I didn't want to pay for them. So I uh, I played Luke. And, and the game was still fun. Don't get me wrong. The pre-release was a great time. And I totally understand why they decided to make it. So that you'll have at least a playable, easy to build around leader to fall back on. The problem is so many people then fall back on it. That it kind of homogenized the entire pre-release. And it felt like I was playing against just the starter decks. With a couple of extra cool things they pulled. So I'd really like to see... Uh, from the second set onwards, I'd enjoy seeing something closer to the magic pre-release system where you get a stamped foil or not, yeah, foil, legendary, or rare just randomly from the set. Um, that way it's not quite as much of a build-around card as the, as the promo for this set, which, I don't know, like it was fun, it wasn't bad. But it could be better, and that's kind of the theme of this video, is that I see a lot of promise with the, with this game, but we've come out the gate and we've noticed a couple of pain points, or at least I have. Maybe I'm being too critical, I'd love to get your thoughts. But another thing that I've noticed is that the, the art is... I mean, it's not terrible across the board. Uh, I, I do want to say that the art looks good when you're talking about ship cards, uh, vehicle cards, equipment cards, uh, droids, helmeted characters like troopers. It's kind of why I wanted to play Tarkin troopers. I don't like Tarkin that much, but the troopers all look fantastic. They look really cool. Um, I like the art for vigilance. I like the art for uh, all of those, actually. Command, aggression, uh, cunning. I think those are all of them. That whole um, cycle looks pretty good, but I pulled Han and I was like, oh, let me let me play Han, Han's pretty cool. And then I, uh, then I looked at Han again and I was like, did they know they weren't 
going for a Lorcana thing, or I don't know, it just doesn't look that great. Uh, and of course, art is subjective, like I said in my last video, which I tried to make much more positive. This one's probably going to be a little more negative, but I'm getting a little off track, actually. It, Han didn't look great, but some of the other cards did. The, the hyperspace cards looked great. The hyperfoils looked even better. I got a hyperfoil emperor, which was really cool because one, it's, I mean, it's cool pulling anything that's a recognizable character, and two, it's a $45 card. And that's really nice because the base version of the emperor is not a $45 card. And what they've done, like I said in my last video, is create, and I'm not a genius for pointing this out, everybody knew this, but I'm glad it's working out the way everybody predicted, where the hyperspace cards are expensive and the base versions of the card are not expensive, with two exceptions. Boba Fett is $50, and uh, Vader, who I pulled, is like 70 bucks, which is not great. I mean, Vader's the iconic character, everybody's going to want to play Vader, I'm sure that's dragging the price up a bit. He also looks like a good card, which is probably most of what's driving the price up. Uh, I'm thrilled I pulled one. I'm thrilled it's worth $70, but honestly, I really just would like to see that go down, and I'm sure it will as more people open boxes. But other than those two outliers, the rest of the set seems pretty decent from a price perspective. Um, I opened a Vigilance that was hyperspace. That was like 20 bucks, but the base version is like 5 The base version of Windu, last I looked, was like 4 or $5. Um... Those are both very playable legendaries as far as I can tell. I don't actually know much about whether or not Windu is good, but Vigilance seems pretty good, or at least it will be in later sets. The double pip for the aspects is kind of questionable at this point. There's not really a card pool to support it, but my point is these aren't necessarily bad cards, and they're pretty cheap, which is great to see because I think that this game really will need to be accessible to a more casual audience to last long term and so cards being super expensive is not great i think this is going to be a game that a lot of people pick up as a secondary game um i got bored with magic for a couple sets and randomly picked up pokemon and a deck was like 40 dollars for the tier one best deck in the format back when i played i don't know how it is now but that's really nice because when people start picking the game up as a secondary game then when they're unhappy with their main game like when magic messes up you get a lot more people playing and then all of a sudden you got people who have it as their main game who maybe wouldn't have jumped all in right away so i think that having cards be cheap is fantastic the constructed format i i don't know how it's shaping up yet i don't even think competitive is starting until a few sets down the line but i've got good ideas for decks both ones that currently exist and ones i'm hoping will exist for the future i'm Looking forward to deck building quite a bit. Constructed seems to have at least a bit of depth to it, and I have no doubt that it will continue to have more depth in the future. Uh, the card pool is just too small to support that much creativity right now, uh, but I have pretty high hopes. Weekly Play is already doing maybe not as well as I had hoped, but better than I had feared. It's doing pretty well. I, I'm, I'll put it this way. I haven't had any trouble finding games when I show up to stores for weekly play. I showed up to a pre-release, there was a respectable crowd there, drafts seem fine, constructed I haven't been to yet, so I don't know how that's doing, but drafts and pre-release were, were fine, so that's good. Uh, the pre-release, or not the pre-release, the weekly play packs are a really nice incentive to show up to, because even if you're somebody who opens a lot of boxes, maybe opens multiple cases. I am not that guy. I do not have that money, but other people do. It's still nice to be able to show up and you, you know you're getting like your couple of booster packs as a prize maybe if you're winning like, you know, a pack per round in draft. But having that little extra incentive of getting a weekly play card that's special, great idea. I think that's a really nice idea. A lot of other games do it. I think it'll incentivize people to continue showing up even when they otherwise wouldn't on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, one notice, noticeable issue is the legendary ordering. Uh, now, this is 
borderline unsubstantiated conspiracy theory. I am kind of just throwing this out here like I know what I'm talking about. I don't. I'm going to do that a lot in the future on my channel. Don't expect quality. But I have noticed a little bit that people are starting to post online on social media, Reddit, Twitter, YouTube. I have a pretty good video that I saw from a guy that opened a ton of boxes. I'll link it in the description. And he's seeing the same legendaries in the same order over a large quantity of boxes. And so what that means is if you open Boba Fett, you're always going to get command. You're always going to get, I think it was Luke. I think those are the three that went together. Personally, I got Vigilance, Mace Windu, Darth Vader. That was on his list of preset orders. Normally I'd write this off, but like the fact that my first box had this issue is kind of concerning and anecdotally gives a little bit of credibility to the fact that this is a potential issue. I'm going to be opening more boxes in the next couple weeks, possibly on the channel, possibly not. I don't really know. Um, I'll look out for it and see whether it's actually an issue consistently. It could just be a small subset of boxes, but that's something that would absolutely need to be fixed. I mean, that's not a good thing to have happening. You should have it so that your packs are random. I mean, this is something that does happen here and there with other games. I know Pokemon had a couple of years ago, I, I don't remember what set exactly, but they had an issue where the hits were always in the same position in the box, so you could go like fifth pack down on the right, and that's always a hit, and then like second pack on the left, so on and so forth. And so they'd pull all the hits out, and then, you know, the boxes were searchable, essentially. And that's really bad, obviously. This doesn't seem to be quite as bad as that, but like, if I open a box and I get Mace Windu, and I know I'm getting a $70 Darth Vader, that's pretty noteworthy if I know that's in the box. Depending on how consistent this is, this could be a pretty small issue. This is more of a question mark than a positive or a negative. It's something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, I'm just looking through my list and uh, the only other thing I have on here is that I want to emphasize <laughs> that the game is fun. I mean, this is some of the hesitations that I've noticed, some of the positives and negatives that I've noticed in the weeks after the release, but I'm enthusiastic about this game. I expect to be putting uh, more videos on this channel about card games, but this game in spe specific for sure in the future, it's gonna be more videos for sure. Um, I'm gonna be opening more boxes, I'm gonna be playing more games, I'm gonna be building more decks, I'm gonna be going to weekly play in a couple of sets when they do competitive, I'm excited to try that. I'm gonna be terrible. I'm not going to admit I'm terrible once I'm terrible, but since it hasn't happened yet, I'll let you know I'm going to be terrible. But it, it's a good experience so far. The people that showed up, they're Star Wars fans, which means on the internet, we're insufferable in person. Most people that actually show up, that you know, everybody at the store was pretty nice for the pre-release, welcoming, it was a good time. A lot of people from other card games, a lot of people from Destiny, it's a really good experience, I think, and I'm very, very excited for the second set. I know they've started to leak some of the merchandise, some of the game genic stuff is starting to give indications to what will be in that set, and I'm excited for the future of this game still. It's, it's really fun, and I think there's a lot of room to expand on this. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't generally do unscripted stuff. I think this video went a few minutes long. I'm not really sure how it's going to be received, especially compared to some of my scripted stuff that is, to be completely honest with you, doing a lot better than I had expected. So we'll see. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think of the game. Thanks for watching.